How's everybody doing here this morning? That's good. Glad to be in the house. Amen. Glad to be in the house of the Lord. As always, I'm going to start by saying I had fun last night. And now he's going to talk about cheating. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. Here's where, where I'm going. I had fun here as we played last night. And we played and we played and we played. And I'm going to use something I've heard someone speak upon. You know, we've heard him say three times, feed my sheep, play my sheep. And that third time is I've heard I've heard and speak on the lambs. As we played and we played and we played, and last night I had fun, but here's what I seen is everyone was there and everybody got involved. Man, did we have fun. But here's what I seen is everyone got involved. We had more and more fun and the game went on and on and on. But here's what I liked about everybody being involved. I heard from some folks that last night who've been quiet. And I here's what I found that they've got some ideas and they've got some of their opinions. And as the game played, I could hear from each and every one. But here's what I found. As I was able to hear from each and every one as they spoke up as the game went on and on. And here's what happened. The game went on so long it had to come to a close, so I made a decision. And I ruled everybody out but me and Cheryl. And I made a mistake because I did that. <laughs> I didn't see what was happening, but I made a mistake. But here's where I'm going. Everybody played and everybody had a voice. And we had so much fun in us night. And I thought that's how heaven is going to be. But here's where I'm going. I made a decision. And we were having so much fun, but I closed everybody out. And here's where I'm going with that. Satan, that's what he wants to do. He wants to close you out of heaven. At the end, when you've worked hard and when you have did the right things, he wants to fix it so you can't do anything. But who has fixed things so it's just not so? He's in charge, right? He's paid the price. But here's what we have to do. Everybody's got to speak up. Everybody's got some some things they have to do. We all have to what? They repent, accept him and change, and then live for Christ. But here's what I found last night. As we let everybody take part, I heard somebody say last night, why don't we play something where everybody can take part? Oh, let's stop for a second. Why don't we do something where everybody can play a part, where everybody has a part? Is that not what the Lord has planned for us? Everybody has a part. His will in, in our lives that we are to do his work, his will. But God has a plan for us. But here's what we have to do as we did last night. And, and I seen something last night. Guys, I don't know everything. I've always known I didn't. But la hey, last night I heard from some young people. And old Kyle kept reading the instructions. And, and here's what happened as he read the instructions. The game went on and on. And that was some young folks who had some ideas. And I laughed. It was funny. And I laughed and I laughed and I laughed. But here's where I'm going. My soul was blessed and my heart it was blessed. And here's why. Because everybody had a part. And here's where I'm going back to where it says, feed those lambs, feed those lambs. I mean, excuse me. He says, feed those sheep, feed those sheep. But then he, he speaks last on those lambs. And I freaked out and played it. Why are those lambs so important? Why are they so important? I could see that last night. As the game went on and on, here's what happened to me. And I hate to say it, but I become tired. And I was having fun, but I began to grow tired. But here's what I seen. Some of those lambs begin to speak up. And all I could do was laugh because I could hear from them. I could hear their opinions. And here's what occurred. It made the game even that much more fun. Even Kyle had fun last night. He was, he was sitting there and he laughed and he was laughing and I was as well. Yes, yeah, so Kyle is such a stick in the mud. <laughs> but here's why the game was so much fun. See, everybody had a part. And here's where I'm going. When we get to where, no, 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 I'm going to stop because I'm getting ahead of myself. Before we get to where we're going, which is here, we have a part to play, right? His will that he has for each one of our lives. We are to assist 
each other in this we're going to make it ask for us to do here. And after we have did that, and after we have been accepted, we have accepted him in our lives and we live for Christ, all I could think of last night as the game went on and on and on, that's how heaven was going to be. See, and last night I had to close it out because it was getting late and the church had to be clean. But see, I'm told that in Scripture that like every day is going to be like Sunday. See, I won't have to close anything out. All I have to do is what? Praise the Lord. Sing and enjoy each other. As we did last night, and man, I heard from him this morning, and I pick up for him. I laughed even when I went home last night. But here's where I'm going. When we have done the will of Christ, we will be blessed for. Your soul will be filled in that you will find self-fulfillment. And let me say this. We have some wonderful young folks here in Abbott. And let's hear them. Let's hear them because, hey, last night, man, hey, hey, my soul was fed and, and I was filled with joy. Why was I filled with joy? To hear those young people speak up. Man, it added to it. It added to it. And I didn't win. I, I'll say it, Kyle. I did not win. <laughs> I didn't win the game, but yet and still I did win. Why do I say I still won? Because I got to hear from some people who finally got to speak up. And as they spoke up, hey, hey, my soul was fed because there was a time when I said no. And I didn't know when my time was going to come when I was going to get to speak up. There's going to be a time when my day is going to dawn. My time will be gone. But here's what I seen last night. There are some people that will come behind us and speak up and lead this church forward. That is what we're here to do. To always have someone that's prepared who will step up and help share the word of the Lord. Why is that so important? Why is that so important? It is to go on until when? Until the Lord comes back. How does that happen? By ensuring that there are young lambs to haul us forward. Now I'm going to say this as, as I close. You young folks and you older people and folks my age, I fit in there somewhere because there's a place for us all on the Lord's stage. We are to encourage each other. And guys, I'm going to say this. If you didn't make it last night, I'm going to encourage you guys to be here next fun night. It's getting exciting. The food was wonderful. I ate, and I ate, and I ate, and I even took some home. And I'm going to eat once I go home today. But I'm going to say this, my soul was faith and friendship and fellowship. And as I get to see those young folks grow, that's a wonderful thing. But why are they able to grow? The older folks out here grow. They put in the work, the time. They have fixed it so the one that could live behind me. Good. So everyone here is important, but I want to close with this. We don't care how old you are or how young, because I seen last night I was one of the older hey, ones there. But I think I had hey, the most fun. Jack and his brother were happy to have hey, you guys, and I enjoyed you guys last night as I laughed and laughed. But that's what we want. Why do we want that? We want the world I didn't know out there that we're having fun up here, right? And I know they heard me. Oh, my goodness. Cheryl. My goodness. I wish y'all could have heard her last night. She was beside herself. Yeah, I think she was because Cheryl won. But in Christ, they'll stay with the Lord. What's going to happen? I lost last night, but I didn't lose. I still won. But if we'll stay with the Lord, then what's going to happen? How are we going to win? We are going home to be with him. It's going to be even that much more fun than what it was last night. Now I'm going to close, guys, with this. It has been a while, and I keep saying I'm going to close that, but I will. But I'm going to say this. It has been a while since I've sat in a church and laughed and laughed until I heard him sing. And when I went home last night, I felt good. Even though I was hurting in the stomach, I felt good. And why? Because I had had fun and I talked about 
That is how it should be. That is what he has planned for us. But how does that happen? By us being here for each other and sharing with each other and sharing the love of Christ. Feeding those lambs. So let's stay at it, guys. Thanks. Find a volunteer that would like to look up scripture and read. Uh, Jamel, yeah. find First Timothy, first chapter, verses twelve through twenty. And who would you find Titus, chapter three, verses three through eight? Paul, who was a great missionary, said he was also one of the chiefs of sinners. We think probably that that refers back to before he met Christ on the road to Damascus. But he also said after that, what he wanted to do, he did not. And what he did not want to do, he did. So like you and me, even Paul was still a sinner. The difference between people in this world, there are two types. There's the sinner and there's the sinner safe with grace. Titus yeah. 3, 3 through 8. At one time we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Christ Jesus, our Savior, so that having been justified by grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to stress these things so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. These things are excellent and profitable for everyone. Christ came into this world as a human form for one purpose and one purpose only. To provide a way for us to be able to be saved. We must accept the fact that Christ lived a perfect life and died on the cross, shed his blood on the cross so that we could be saved. Um, Janelle Romans 10 and verse 9, when you have time. Let's the next one I'll ask you for will be in Romans 5. Okay. 
If salvation is not that complicated, we confess with our mouth and we believe. Now that belief, let me stress, is more than a head knowledge. It has to be part of our heart. We have to truly believe that Christ did provide for our salvation. Let's see Romans 5, 9 through 21. Okay, Romans 5, 9 through 21. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. How much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, and through whom we have now received reconciliation. You said through 21? Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin... And in this way, death came to all men because all sinned. Uh, for before the law was given, sin was in the world. But sin is not taken into account when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even though, even over those who did not sin by, by breaking a command, as did Adam, who was... A pattern of the one to come but the gift is not like the trespass for if if the many died by the trespass of one man how much <coughs> more did God's grace and his gift that came by grace of the of the one man Jesus Christ overflow to the many again the gift of God is not like the result of the one man's sin uh, the judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if by trespass of one man death, trespass of one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in the life of the one man, Jesus Christ? Am I reading the right thing? Okay. Uh, Consequently, uh, what? Okay, go ahead. Oh. Consequently, just as the result of one trespass is condemnation for all men, so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. For just as through the disobedience of one man the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of one man the many will be made righteous. The law was added so that the trespass might increase, but where sin increased, grace increased all the more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through the righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ. I finally understood what I was reading. <laughs> uh, God created Adam and Eve. Put them in the Garden of Eden and gave them one command. You can do, you can eat from any fruit of any tree in the garden except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Satan comes along and tempts them. And through Adam, through the fact that he sinned, sin passed down through all mankind. We are all born with a sin nature. It takes the second birth to get us to the point that we don't love that sin nature. It doesn't kill the sin nature at that point but it gets us to the point that we don't really want to see through one man Adam sin entered this world 
through one man, Jesus Christ. Salvation came to this world. We now are saved through belief in Jesus Christ and looking back on what he did. The people from Adam until Jesus Christ's death on the cross could be saved by looking forward to the promise that God made back in Genesis that he would provide a salvation. So our salvation in this day and time is similar to the salvation from Adam forward. They look forward to Jesus' coming and we look back upon it. But aside from that, trust and faith in Jesus Christ has been the salvation of mankind since Adam. Let's have, we'll give you a short one this time. Romans 1 16. And Janelle, the next one is Romans 5 1 through 11. Can I get there? Are you ready for mine? Romans 1 16. Mm -hmm. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God. For the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jews, then for the Gentile. Salvation is the same for everyone. The opportunity is there for everyone. Christ desired, God the Father desired, that every one of us come to salvation. But there is only one possible way. And that one way is the faith in Jesus Christ. Janelle, Romans 5, 1 through 11. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Our justification, our being declared righteous, is simply and only through the blood of Jesus Christ. As God said, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. But I could shed all of my blood every last drop and it wouldn't affect anything because I'm not righteous. It's only through the blood of Jesus Christ that we can be saved. Leslie, Ephesians 2.8 when you find it. And uh, Janelle Romans 10, 13, can I read it? Okay. Ephesians 2, 8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and it is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, 
not by works, so that no one can boast. We're saved through the grace of God. We're saved to work. But we are not saved by our work. Our work never saved anyone. But God does ask when we are saved that we work for him in trying to bring others to him in trying to help those around us that are less fortunate. But only through the grace of God can we be saved. Works have been preached throughout eternity and works have yet to save any. We are to do good works because Christ died for us. We didn't deserve it. He gave it to us free. Did you know Romans 10, 13? For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We must ask for that salvation. Some have said that because God is love that he will never send anyone to hell. He won't. But he lets us send ourselves. Only through Jesus Christ and his shed blood can we be saved. Do we have an invitation, sir? Well, we can. That's 307. 307. That's 307 for our invitation. If God lays anything on your heart, take care of it today. Because today is the day of salvation.